Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a complete project plan inside of ClickUp. It's gonna be a step-by-step -step using a standard project management framework. I'm a PMP and SAFE certified project manager, and I'm gonna show you how to structure a plan using best practices from setting up spaces, lists, and custom fields to organizing your tasks by phase. Whether you're managing a small team or rolling out a cross-functional project, this walkthrough is gonna help you bring clarity and structure to your workflow. Let's get started. As you watch this video, I'm going to show you how to build this project plan. So this is the project plan built out. The most important thing when it comes to building out project plans is making sure that you have all of the data. You want to make sure that you know your assignees, your dates, and your time estimates. When you have all of that, it's pretty easy to build this view as well as a Gantt view. So stay tuned and I'll show you step by step how to build this plan out. I've logged into my ClickUp. If you don't have a ClickUp account, go ahead, go through the sign up process, and then you should be navigated to a specific view. In my left hand navigation, let's go ahead and select spaces. There's a lot of different functions in ClickUp, and what I'm gonna walk through today is just how to create and manage a project plan. Let's kind of skip all of the fluff, all of the functions, and just dive right into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a space for my PMO team. I'm gonna name it PMO and then I'll make the description management of our PMO department. Let's go ahead and hit continue. We can always use templates for any steps within this process, but I'm just gonna keep everything very bare bones. Let's go ahead and hit continue. I'm gonna make my default view here a list view. We can always add views later. None of these settings are permanent and set in stone. And let's go ahead and create our space. All right, so that's one step done. We went ahead, we created a space. This space is where we're gonna be managing all of our projects. So our PMO department would manage their projects in here. Now you can get crazy, you can create folders, you can create some additional structure here. But for the purpose of this demo, we are just going to have one space and we're gonna have our project plans as list under that space. So today I'm gonna to be managing a project to implement an expense tracker app for my company. So that's what we're gonna be creating a project plan for. So let me go ahead. There's already a list that I got created here. If we create another project, we just hit this plus sign to create an additional list. Whenever you create your first space, there is a list that automatically gets added. So we're just gonna go ahead and work within this list. Let me go ahead. I'm gonna rename this and I'm gonna put my project name here. Implement an expense tracker app. There we go. Now we have our list created. Now, for my project plan, I actually have a Google Sheet that I'll show you guys with the project tasks that I'm going to be creating. So here is my project plan. I have stages. Like I said, I'm going to be using the PMP framework. I have my initiation, planning, execution, training, implementation, monitoring and control, closure and optimization. So these are my stages for my project. Here are all of the tasks for my project my dates, my time estimates, my assignees, and then which ones are milestones. I wanna make this a little bit more efficient and visible for my team, so that's why I'm gonna be mapping it into ClickUp. So let's go ahead and get these stages created within ClickUp. The way that we're gonna create these stages is by creating a custom dropdown field within ClickUp. So let's jump back in. I'm gonna hit this plus sign to add a column, and we are going to name it stage. Let's go ahead and create this field. All right, so I'm creating my stage dropdown field. And then for the options, this is where I'm gonna put the different values for my stage. So we start with initiation, planning, execution, training and communication. All right, so I have all of my stages listed out here under this field, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. Perfect. So the primary fields, similar to how I have my project plan in Google Sheet, the primary fields that I'm gonna be managing is the task stage, the task name, the dates, the time estimate, who it's assigned to, and whether it's a task or milestone. So I have all of my fields here. The only field I need to add is time estimate. Time estimate is a native field within ClickUp, so we don't have to create this as a custom field. We just have to add it into this view. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add a column, and I'm going to search time estimate. We can see that fields in this location already exist, so I'm just gonna to toggle these on. There we go. Perfect. Now all I have to do is add my tasks. Let's add a couple together, and then I'll get all of my tasks created in here. So for initiation, I need to identify my project sponsor and key stakeholder. So let me go ahead and get that task created. I'm gonna sort of add the task name. I'm gonna put the stage as initiation. This is gonna be assigned to me. I'm the project manager. And then I'm gonna put the dates here. 
let's say we start this project next week and we're going to have this from May 27th to May 28th. There we go. And I'm estimating for this to take about 10 hours. There we go. So I've created my first task. Let's go ahead and create another one. My second task is I need to define the business need and project objectives. So same thing. I'm going to add it in here. I'm going to set the stage, my assignee, my dates. Let's say, for example, this one is May 29th to May 31st. Let's go ahead and put those dates in. And then my time estimate. So I'm going to estimate for this to take five hours. And then what I'm going to want to do is I'm actually going to group this rather than by status. I'm going to have this group by stage. Now, as I create my tasks, as I put them in their respective stages, I'll kind of start to see this build out. So I'm just going to start to create my tasks in here. I'm going to finish this up and then we'll see what this looks like. So we're back. I went ahead. I completed my entry of my tasks. So these are all of my tasks for my project. The three most important fields to make sure that you fill for any project plan is the assignee, the time estimate, and the due dates. These are very important fields so that you have a nice Gantt view and then you can also do some workload capacity management. If you wanna know how you can make use of the workload view in ClickUp, check out this video right over here. Now that we have our task created, let me show you how to set milestones. So in my tasks, I have a few milestones. My schedule and conduct project kickoff meeting, I'm gonna set this as a milestone. So I'm gonna click on this task. Right up here on the top left, I can click on where it says task and I can set this to milestone. So my project kickoff meeting is now set as a milestone. Let's go ahead and look at other milestones that we have so I can get those converted. Develop project plan with timeline. This is also a milestone in my project, so I'm gonna do the same thing. And the last milestone I have is documenting the lessons learned and enhancing the any requests that we have. So I'm gonna set this as a milestone. There we go. Now that my list is complete, now that I have all of the information, I am going to create some additional views to get some other ways to look at this data. A Gantt view is super helpful to my project team as well as my stakeholders to see where we're tracking. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus view sign up top and I'm gonna hit Gantt. If I hit this expand button, I'll see all of my tasks here and I can see that they're spread out. Now, to get a cleaner view, I'm going to change the time period from week to quarter. So these are our different options. You can set it to month, quarter, year. I think quarter is what works for me here. And then some other fields that I would like to see here are the stages for my task. So I'm going to go ahead and add a column, and I'm going to bring my stage column here. There we go. So now I can see which tasks are initiation, which tasks are planning, execution. I can see all of that right in my Gantt view, which is quite nice. All right. One other cool feature in the Gantt view is I can start to connect my dependencies. So to define my business need and project objectives, I need to identify my project sponsor and my key stakeholder. So I'm going to click on this little dot on the right hand side of my bar for identifying project sponsor, and I'm going to connect it to the business need task. So all I have to do is I have to click on this dot and connect it. Just connect the dots. There we go. Now, if I open this task, I will see in the relationship field that this task is blocking another task. So I'm going to go ahead and start to map all of my dependencies. So I'm in the middle of mapping all of my dependencies. Something that's also cool is it doesn't always have to be one to one. So my task to assess the data privacy security needs is blocking my task to create default categories for expense types. It's also blocking my task to set up user roles. So I already have this block dependency for for these two tasks and I can click on the same dot here and connect it to this other task. So I'm just going to do another connect the dot and now I can see this task is blocking two of my other tasks in my project plan. So if I click on this, I can see right here that this task is waiting on one task and it's blocking two of my tasks in my project plan. Now that I have all of my dependencies created, I can see here that everything is interconnected in my project plan. Now this is a large complicated project, so this isn't going to look super clean. There are a lot of interdependencies and there are a lot of moving pieces here. 
Let's go ahead and look at how we can customize our Gantt view to make it more preferable. Let's go ahead and go into our layout options. So here there's different ways that you can color the tasks by. I would like to color this by my stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on where it says default and I'm gonna color this by stage. Now I'm able to see which tasks are initiation, which ones are planning, and it just kind of makes it visually a little bit easier for me to process this. If I wanna also have this sorted by stage, I can go ahead and click the sort button over here and have this sorted by stage because sometimes it's a little bit challenging to see by due date considering it's in different stages. There we go. And now I can see my initiation to my planning, to my execution, and it makes it a little bit easier to interpret the plan. Let's go into customize again. I already have this colored by stage. The only other thing I wanna do here is I wanna reschedule dependencies. So if I drag and drop one of these tasks to move the date, I want anything dependent on that task to move as well. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and enable reschedule dependencies. Let's say for example, my project sponsor and key stakeholder task got rescheduled. I'm able to drag and move this. And you can see that as I move it, all of the tasks that are dependent and interconnected to that task are moving along with that move. I can see the create project charter and everything below stay as is because they are not connected to that work. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Let's move create project charter. There. You can see as I move that, if I drag this and move this out a little bit, all of my tasks that are connected are moving along with those date changes. So if I scroll all the way down, I can see that my project now goes to February 18, 2026. So that's a pretty far push just based off of those timeline updates. And that is a Gantt view. What's nice about this view is you can also export this. So if you would like for your clients to have access to this view, you can always hit export and it does give a nice PDF view. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Here is our project plan, and this can be shared with clients. We can always remove the dates and the stage here if we just really want more of this visual view on the right-hand side. We've officially built a project plan in ClickUp, and we have our Gantt view to manage that project plan as well. Now, if I wanna see a workload view, I can always just continue to add some additional views. So let's go ahead and add a workload view. And now I'm able to see my workload view. If I set this by a month, makes it a little bit easier for my project plan. I can see my team's capacity based off of the tasks that I've assigned to them within this project. So I can see that for myself, I am 5% allocated in the month of July. So if I am managing other projects, I now have this insight that I have 95% availability, remaining capacity to work on other projects. Now I have 200 hours for scheduled for a month. I think it's 50 hours per week. So if I am working less than that, I'm able to set my capacity. I can set my daily capacity to eight hours or five hours. If you have different timings for different individuals, you can update that accordingly. And that's it. You now have a full project plan inside ClickUp to track your company-wide implementation project. Whether you're managing a new tool rollout or planning an event, this structure keeps everything organized and it's easy to track. If you have any questions around any of the processes we went through today, add a comment below. And if you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe.